Welcome to Zenterno Radio, where we drop truth gems all along the way. This episode is entitled Yah's Feast or Yahweh's or Yahuwah's Feast versus the Confused World. Yah's Feast versus the Confused World. Now, the world is very confused, and this is why I got to do this episode uh, pertaining feasts, festivals, holidays, holy days, right? Which is uh, so convoluted. Um, but we're going to break this down and we're going to explain the way we should be worshiping the most high, the creator of heaven and earth versus what the world is doing. And they're all compartmentalized from the Jews to the Christians to the Muslims and blah, 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 blah. The whole thing is a confusion. Religion becomes so divided because it's all compartmentalized. Oh, you know, the Jews got a little bit of truth. The Christians got a little bit of truth. The Muslim, you know, and it's just, but nobody has the full picture. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break down some of the full picture here. And um, we're going to be using Passover because this is the time we just actually went through. Uh, and it's not right now. Because right now, people in the world, the confused world, are worshiping Passover, doing, you know, this whole time period. And then you got the Easter and all this stuff. And we're going to break all the etymology down. We're going to break all of this down so you understand. Even Easter, it comes from Ishtar, Astartes. It's a fertility ritual, rabbit in the egg. It goes deep. But before we get into that, we're going to jump to Leviticus chapter 23. This is the creator of heaven and earth and you and me. He is our ultimate father. And what does he say? Leviticus 23, we're going to jump and start maybe verse 5 is fine. In the, ver in the first month of, on the 14th day of the month, between the evenings is the Pesach, Passover to Yahuwah. On the 15th day of the month, it is the festival of Matzoth to Yahuwah. Seven days you eat unleavened bread. On the first day, you do no, you have a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work, servant work. So you don't serve anybody. You don't be a waiter or waitress in those times. You can do cleaning up. Remember, the Sabbath is not over us. We are over the Sabbath. Don't get up, you know, crazy about the Sabbath thing. We are over the Sabbath, but you don't serve. He says, no servant work. So the Kodesh gathering, no servile work. And you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah for seven days. On the seventh day is a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have come into the land, when you come into the land which I give you and shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits uh, of your harvest to the Kohen priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before Yahuwah for your acceptance. On the morrow after the Shab Sabbath, Shabbat, uh, the Kohen waves it, the priest waves it. And on that day, when you wave the sheaf, you shall prepare a male lamb, a year old, a perfect one, as a, as a burnt offering to, Yah to Yahuwah, and its grain offerings, two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to Yahuwah, a sweet fragrance, and its drink offering, one-fourth of a hin of wine. And you do not eat bread or roasted grain or fresh grain until the same day that you have brought uh, an offering to your Elohim, Allah forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And then it goes on to now the Feast of Weeks. And the more after that Sabbath, then you basically, and you, you wave the sheaf, you count yourself seven Sabbaths, and until you count, uh, after the seventh Sabbath, you count 50 days, you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahweh, and that would be the Feast of Weeks. But we're, let's focus on uh, what, what we're supposedly going through right now, which is Passover and all this time right, right now. Again, April, we're in April, pagan calendar. This is not Passover time. This is the world, and the world is in error, and they're honoring the Most High's time on the wrong time which makes him it does anger him because it's incorrect because if you lost the ways of the times the days the new moons the sabbaths the feasts and his festivals and you mix the the clean with the unclean and the kodesh with uh not kodesh um it's a, it, the most high is upset about that for certain okay this is how critical it is he gave us smarts and intelligence so we could figure this stuff out 
not to just be followers, 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 and going down to the pit. That's why the Bible says, you know, narrow is the way to life, but broad is the way to destruction. Because really, what is the broad way? Well, it's because you're a follower and you don't want to change and you want to just go along with everybody, even if the change is hard, right? Because that's really the thing about it. It's hard, right? And that's why you don't want to change. So since you don't want to change, you're going to go down the broad path with everybody else to destruction. That's your fault. It's not the most high's fault, and it's not any righteous man or woman's fault who is uh, seeking the right way, going down the narrow path. It is up to us to seek the truth. It is up to us to find the way to life. You know, this is like half life. Like we're living this life, it's a half life. We're not really have ultimate life, like eternal life yet. You know, and you're happy with just down here. We gotta seek to get to the eternal life. We need to seek to have that real light that heavenly energy so so now we're going to jump into the gospel of matthew and see some hard teaching to a to a degree of what the most high is saying so matthew 10 34 do not think that i have come to bring peace on earth i did not come to bring peace but a sword for I have come to bring division a man against his father a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies are those of his own household he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he who does not take up his stake and follow after me is not worthy of me he who has found his life shall lose it and he that has lost his life for my sake shall find it. Let's go now to Luke 14 and 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and his own life too, he is unable to be my disciple, Talmud. And whoever does not bear his stake and come after me is unable to be my disciple, Talmud. So this is the New Testament, and I know that this is going to be very hard for people to hear that, right? Because it's very deep what it's saying, but I think it's, I not just think, I know it's trying to drive home a point. It's basically saying, you better put the creator of heaven and earth first on a list of ones in your life. He comes first before everything and everybody. Then you love other people. You can love your father, your mother, your siblings, your children, etc. But the Most High has to be placed first. When we put, well, I'm going to put my, my son and my daughter first. I'm going to put my mother and my father first. I'm going to put my aunts and uncles, my family, whatever, my friends, this job, this money. When I put something in front of the Most High, this is the grave sin, right? This is the thing that the Most High has to, is going to destroy. Because it's really about him. We have to put him first. He is first. We're in a fallen state. We seek repentance. This is what this, this life is technically about. Few are call, Many are called, few are chosen. The few are chosen are the ones who can realize what I'm saying and realize that this is the truth. It's the hard truth. It's the harder truth. Again, a lot of people, they, it, this is disturbing. It's like, oh, I can't, I can't do that. I, I, have, to, I have to love my family. I have to, and they, they just can't do it. They just can't get past that. They just can't get past that. That's, it is what it is. This is the, the hard truth, right? The most high comes first. We just read that, okay, it's a law forever in all your dwellings. That's, the earth is the Lord's in the, in, the, in the fullness thereof. That means no matter where you go on this planet, you're still where he, you, under his control, under his rule. The earth is the most high's. And so if the earth is the most high's, he says, oh, it's a law forever in all your dwellings here. You're not going to Mars. You're not going out of here. You're, not, you're staying here. So you have to honor the Most High in this time, righteously doing as He wanted for us. And He does it for our benefit. Because when we follow Him, all good things start to happen in our lives. And we see that, that we have benefit and blessing for our family and friends when we follow the Most High. When we put Him on a back burner or something, and He's not our focus, how then do we see blessings and favor and a lot of good things happening? We don't see that. We see a lot of errors. We see a lot of issues. We see a lot of suffering when we don't follow the right way. Okay. 
So in uh, the timeline we're in right now, we're actually today happens to be the 30th day of the first month. This is the real calendar. I've studied this for years. I paid attention to the cycle of the moons. I studied this thoroughly. I know what I'm talking about. I've studied the scriptures as well as studying nature itself, watching the moon cycles. I did this even specifically from around 2015 to 16 and then 17, thoroughly studying the moon cycles, literally having to wait a year, looking at the moon, watching every month, every day. I did this. So we are in the first month, but it's the 30th day. And tomorrow, Friday, as they say, this, which would be the sixth day, will be the second, first day of the second month. So when you're doing your Good Friday and you're worshiping, you're saying Easter, and then you're saying uh, Passover and unleavened bread, you're off kilter and off time. How do I know this? We're going to go now to Jubilees chapter 6 and edify the people. Let's go. Uh, Jubilees chapter 6, verses 32. Command you, the children of Israel, that they observe the years according to this counting, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony. And they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. But if they neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all the seasons and the years and be, will be dislodged from this order. And they will neglect their established rules. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and they will wrongly determine all the order of the years. For I know and from now on will declare it to you and it is not of my own devising for the book lies written in the presence of me and on the heavenly tablets the division of days is ordained or they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the gentiles um ramadan and they walk according to the feast of the gentiles um easter and they walk according to the feast of the gentiles uh christmas thanksgiving um, we can go on and on and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles, the timeline of the Judaism and the synagogues, synagogue of Satan. Okay. After their error and after their ignorance, for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, just like the Jews and the Muslims and how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they disturb bracket misinterpret the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day and they will confound all the days the holy or the kodesh with the unclean and the unclean with the kodesh for they will go wrong as to the months and sabbaths and feasts and jubilees for this reason i command and testify to you that you may testify to them for after your passing your children will disturb them so that they will not make the year 364 days only and for this reason they will go wrong as to the new moon seasons sabbaths festivals and they will eat all kinds of uh, blood with all kinds of flesh uh that sounds like when people out there in africa and asia they're eating monkey they're eating shark they're eating uh swordfish they're eating uh oh my gosh lions and a lot of types of bugs and insects and Go read Leviticus chapter 11. That's the real dietary law. That's the real thing you should be eating. You want to know what to eat? Basically, when it comes to animals and creatures, you basically eat, don't eat 95% of them, but there's a small amount you can eat. Go read Leviticus chapter 11. Uh, when it comes to the herbs, vegetation, uh, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, grains, and, and herbs. Yes, this is what you should be eating. Come on, people. It's, enough is enough and it's time to wake up. Go read the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, both. That's two witnesses. The year is 364 days. This is the fact. But then look at the pagan world told you it's all 365. And then what this stupid scientist say It's 365.25. Oh, and then they added the, the leap year. So now it's 366 every four years. And then you got the Jewish. And I'm going to say this because I got to break it down. The, the reason they, they even add a 13th month because what is it? Oh, the, the moon is 10 days too short. So then in three years, the moon is 30 days short. So that's why they add another a month. Well, the scripture don't say add a 13th month, but this is the folly and the pride of these people say, well, they worship the moon then. So that's why they do that. We don't worship the moon. We don't do this blasphemy. We don't do this nonsense. 
Praise be to the king all day. Praise be to the king forever and always. Trust me, you have to find the truth. And if you don't find the truth, you will error in this life. And the Most High will keep you accounted and accountable for your responsibility. You didn't seek. You didn't use your money to help people. That's another thing. The money is about to collapse. What are you using your money for? If you're a millionaire and all of a sudden they switch the money system, you're holding on to $1 million and you didn't help nobody. You're a fool, man. You should have been helping people out here. You should have been helping your family. You should have been helping the people on the street. But you was greedy, man. You held on to that. Selfish. Selfish. The Most High will burn you. It's just the facts. We're here. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. We need to know what the truth is and we have to follow the Mashiach. We have to follow the light. Because our time is up. We in the end times. And it's time to wake up. So I'm here as a messenger to shine a light and bring forth the truth. Praise be to the king. I truly pray that the message touches the masses that need to hear this. Because this is how the Most High works anyways. I don't have a huge following, but I know whoever listens to it is going to be touched. Please change your life and change your commitment. Take this serious. Ask yourself. Look around you. See nature. You know it's the Most High. You know he's real. Come to him. Come to him in truth. Follow this because the world itself is chaos. The world is wickedness and they do all their evil feasts and they do all their evil practices, all connected to all of this stuff, all about money, greed, and they're selfish and they hold on to things and they do their stupid little festivals, yeah, Easter and this and this. I was going to quickly break down Easter. That's true. The etymology, it comes from Ishtar, Estartes, and Ashtaroth. If you go into the scriptures as well and understand the history, you know, that's a goddess. Like Ishtar is like a, an a, a, a Astartes, and Ishtar is a goddess, right? And it's a fertility goddess. And that's where they get a rabbit and egg. Again, rabbits don't lay eggs. It has to do with sexuality and fertility. And this is what the pagans constantly worship. They constantly worship fertility. It's the same thing in uh, Christmas time and Valentine's. It's all uh, fertility. So, this is not what the Most High is wanting to worship. He wants you to worship Him in spirit and truth. He wants you to seek the truth. And that's that. Praise be unto the King. Um, this is Yah's Feast versus the Confused World. You are now listening to Yah's Feast and the Confused World. Choose today then, who will you serve? The Creator of Heaven and Earth in truth and in spirit? Or will you worship the confused world and follow the masses who are going to destruction? We could clearly see what happened with, you already know what happened a couple of years ago. Did you follow the masses? Did you follow the confused world? Or did you seek truth and did you seek spirit? Ask yourself that. And uh, trust me, it is what it is. Praise be to the Most High. Uh, Salem and Shalom. You have been listening to Zenturno Radio. The last piece of information that needs to be added when it comes to Easter and why people will be like, well, we worship Easter because uh, it represents the passion of Christ, right? So him, him being crucified and then the resurrection. But I want to let people understand this. Remember, Mashiach uh, had the Last Supper, which is the Passover dinner. So Mashiach had the Passover. He ate the food. Judas betrays him and that night we know what happened they arrest him and they charge him that night and in the morning they put him up on the on the tree and the, and the beam and whatever and then in three days he rises again so in the same feast week of the Passover the Pasach the unleavened bread and first fruits Matzoth all this uh, talks about seven days in that time frame he has the passion takes place and his resurrection takes place in the same Passover week. This is also why it's so profound that we don't, there's no separation. So that's why I'm saying there's a separation between Christianity and, and, and the New Testament, the Old Testament, the Jews and the Christians. And, the, and there's all this confusion. No Christian pastor talks about this. No Christian church and pastor is talking about this and priest. They're not connecting that it's connected to Passover and connected to unleavened bread and everything. It's all connected. So why when I'm worshiping that time, I should also be, I also am understanding that his passion, his resurrection is the same timeline. For us to switch and say, we're going to do this thing called Easter. I told you that's a goddess of fertility worship. 
So instead of actually honoring the Savior, truly, you should be holding, if you want to worship the Mashiach, you should be holding to the Passover, the unleavened bread and the first fruits and respecting his resurrection in that week. But once you disregard that, which was about two weeks ago when it started, and now here you're going to say, well, I'm going to worship uh, this right here, what you're doing is you're praising the God of this world who created these entities because Satan's regime and Satan's uh, minions or his fellow fallen angels and demons are these gods. They are, they are mammon, they, you know, they are um, Azazel, they are uh, uh, Ishtar, Osiris and Isis and they're all these different gods, the, the Thors and the Loki, all this is all Satan. All of these gods in all the world is from Satan. It's not the most high. They're all demons, actually. And people worship demons and they worship what they don't know. And that's what Easter is, becomes about. If you really understand, again, the sound is a frequency which holds to the demon. It doesn't hold to the most high. It doesn't bring connection and frequency to the, the king and the creator of, of heaven and earth. So it's a blasphemy. And the world, again, is following satan's rule not the most high's rule this is why it's so dangerous knowledge is power and as hosea says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge so we know that the world again i'm telling you is going to go to destruction because they oh they're so used to what was they're so scared of change why well, if i change i'm not going to have it you're right you're not going to have it but the most High says if you, if you don't lose your life for my sake you're not going to have it anyways you're still going to lose yourself still going to lose your life you got to follow the most high in truth. You're still going to lose it if you just, uh, oh, I'm going to lose. Yeah, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose in the end. The most high is going to judge you for that. You got to see the truth. There's no, it's not a game. It's not a game. This is a spiritual matter. This is a completely spiritual matter. So the most high brings people like me forth. And it's, we're, we're beacons. We are messengers. We are lighthouses. That's what a lighthouse is. A lighthouse is so that a ship doesn't crash into the land and, and run aground. That means the ship goes into the beach and now it can't get back out to the sea because it ran it ran right into the, to the island or the continent. Right. A lighthouse is to guide passage. Say, oh, OK, I can see the light. Keep going down this direction on the ocean, on the waterway. If there's no lighthouses, how can people be guided? If there's no messengers, how are people going to change their life? If, you know, how are they going to get out of their sin that they're in? How are they going to get out of their addictions and their stupidity and their folly if they don't have messengers like myself? So Easter broken down and all of this stuff, uh, the church, the just, just so much convolution. We have to make a change and change is hard. But I'm going to tell you right now, I was the one who had to make that change. When you come out on the other side, you come out a better soul. You're a stronger soul. You have a stronger light. You have a better understanding. And you're a better individual, a better soul on this place. I'm telling you from a veteran. You want life? Follow what I'm saying. Uh, I followed his word. I followed his truth. And you don't have to follow me, but you follow what my message is, which is his word anyways. It's the most highest word. You follow that, you're going to become a better individual, a better soul on this planet. And you're going to make yourself right at home in the light kingdom and not go down to the pit of destruction when that time comes. Gird up yourselves. Know the time is ready. Ephesians 6, put on the armor. We need it right now. We need it right now. Salam and shalom.